Hi there, this is Clark from the Charts team, and I wanted to walk you through a quick demo of MongoDB Atlas Charts. Charts is the native data visualization tool built natively into MongoDB Atlas, and that makes it the best way to visualize your data on MongoDB. It's fast, it's really easy to use, and it's powerful. It's built on the document model, which means there's no data movement or duplication. It's completely integrated into Atlas, which means any cluster configuration you create is accessible and available for viewing in charts, and you can share and collaborate across your team really easily. And it's also really powerful with an embedding SDK and embedding functionality that lets you create engaging data experiences in the contexts that matter most to your users. So diving in, let's just start in an Atlas project where I have some data set up for us to visualize. And to get into charts, I'll just navigate into this charts tab here at the top of the page and my application will load. Now in this demo, I'm gonna walk through creating a dashboard, adding a few charts, uh, showing you some interactivity, and then showing off some of the ways that you can extend the value of your dashboard. So every chart is organized into a dashboard and data sources are made automatically available from your project for visualizing data. And project owners, can control access to any deployment, which is any cluster configuration you make in Atlas as needed from this page. You can explore data source details, you can manage um, permissions at a pretty granular level, and you can even create charts views, which are aggregation pipelines dedicated to the purpose of sampling only the data you need for visualization. And this can make working with uh, larger data sets more performant. So for this demo, I'm going to use an Airbnb data set that contains listing information for rentals uh, across the world. And let's go back to the project dashboards to get started. So I mentioned that every chart lives on a dashboard. So let's go ahead and create a new dashboard and just call it the charts demo. I could also add a description, but it's optional. So I'll skip that step for now. This will bring me to an empty dashboard where I can add my first chart. And this takes me straight into what we call the chart builder. The first thing you'll notice navigating into the chart builder is this prompt to choose a data source. I mentioned I'm going to be using this Airbnb data set, and I can find that right here. Charts will then go ahead once I select it, sample this source, and show me a list of all the fields on the left hand side of the page in the field panel. Charts, maps, all data types to either strings, numbers, dates, or even geo coordinates, and it understands the document model natively, so you can visualize all your fields, including nested arrays and subdocuments. For the first chart, I want to look at the number of listings by country. So let's choose a chart type that makes sense for that. Maybe I'll use a donut chart. And from here, I can look in my encoding panel. The encoding panel contains the label channel and the arc channel. Now a label channel is a category channel and category channels are typically used for discrete data like strings. So this is where I'm going to encode the country field. Next, let's look at the arc or aggregation channel. These are typically used for number values. In this case, I want to count uh, the number of listings by country. An easy way to do this is to use the ID field and just drag that onto the aggregation channel. This will default to a count. And here's our first chart. You can hover over the individual segments to get a bit more information. There's also a legend that auto populated. You can customize these things in this customize tab. You can also look at the top of the page here at our uh, query builder or query library. Um, this can be really useful in terms of writing a query aggregation that you want to reuse, share with your team, potentially, you can read more about this in our documentation. So the last step is just giving our chart a title, listings by country, and saving that to our dashboard. Charts on the dashboard can be rearranged, you can drag and drop, you can also resize them. So let's make this a little bit more visible. And now that I have a nice chart here, let's go ahead and add another chart and build this dashboard out a little bit. So you're familiar with the chart builder at this point, but notice how now that I've already created a chart in this dashboard, charts is suggesting a data source that I used in the previous chart. 
given that it's somewhat likely that I'm creating a related chart and maybe even using the same data source. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and select this data source again and create our second chart. So now let's leverage a different chart type and look at the prices of different listings across suburbs. So I've already uh, selected a grouped bar chart and I know that there's a price field in here somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the price field and drag it onto my aggregation channel. And I wanna look at the average price. So let's change this aggregation to mean. Now I need to encode the suburb that is in the address sub document. So let's just go back to our fields and select suburb and drag it into the category channel. So now this chart's loaded and I can see all the suburbs ordered by um, price of listing. And this is a lot to take in. So let's go ahead and limit our results to only the top 10 charts, limit results defaults to show you top 10, but maybe I actually want to see 20 results, so I can just update that here. All right, so that was easy. Let's give this chart a name, mean price by suburb, and go back to our dashboard. So I'll resize this chart a little bit to match the other, and there we go. Now I'm starting to see this dashboard of Airbnb listing data. Okay, so let's take this dashboard a step further. What if I wanna look at only a particular region within this data? For instance, the charts team is based in Sydney, so I'd like to look at only the Australian suburbs. And to do that, I'll simply navigate to this filter icon to create a dashboard filter. So here I can select the field I wanna filter this dashboard by, and I mentioned that I would be looking at the region relevant to the charts team in Australia. So let's apply that filter. Now go ahead and close that. Then I can just check and see that both of these charts are set up to filter or highlight. These will be part of the interaction that I just defined using a filter. So when I go ahead and click into the Australian uh, listings, my mean price by suburb chart will reflect only those suburbs in Australia. This is a pretty cool way to immediately see how you can create just a couple of charts or you could have dozens of charts and you could really interact with this data to find unique insights relevant to your business. Now there are a couple other things I wanna show you that will really extend the value you can get from a dashboard across your team. So let's back out of this filter and the next step would be maybe I want to share this with other individuals on my team. And Chart supports a wide variety of sharing options. I can easily share the dashboard with anyone with access to my project here. I could share the dashboard publicly if it's really not sensitive data. And recently we introduced a really flexible option for sharing dashboards across your entire organization. And so I'll show you what that looks like here just by selecting uh, can view this dashboard. That means anyone in my organization can go ahead and look at this data. And to show you what that looks like, I'll just navigate to my organization dashboards. And now you can see that I've added this charts demo to an organization dashboard. Pretty cool. Finally, let's talk about embedding. Now I could take any of my dashboards in charts and embed those into the relevant context uh, where my data consumers might benefit from seeing the dashboards and visualizations. The easiest way to learn more about embedding is just to navigate to our embedding page. This is your one-stop shop to learn about chart and dashboard embedding, um, to get it implemented for your team, to learn a bit more about the SDK and other helpful info to just get you up to speed on embedding. And this is a really valuable way to further extend your value in charts. So that was just a short introduction into some of the basic features of Atlas Charts. To recap, there are five key takeaways that I wanna leave you with. First, Charts is made for JSON and works natively with the document model. This means you can work really quickly. 
Second, Charts is integrated into Atlas, which means you can quickly visualize any of your cluster configurations in Atlas with no ETL. Third, embedding functionality gives your visualizations even more usefulness, bringing data into the context your users care about. Fourth, Charts is built for easy collaboration across your project and organization. And finally, a big one, Charts requires no user-based licensing. Charts is free for up to a gigabyte of data transferred per project per month. This covers quite a bit of usage and additional data transfer is just a dollar per gigabyte, making Charts a low cost, if not zero cost solution for your data visualization. We're always adding new functionality to make Charts even more useful. So keep an eye out for more from us in the coming months. Thanks a lot for listening.